world's first Tesla Cybertruck just sold at Mannheim auction for two hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. Two forty-five? Somebody bid two forty-five? That's two hundred forty-four thousand five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, like what? I said, they're they're colorful. Why can't we so, do that at Bear Jackson? <laughs> Sell that bitch is right. John Clay Wolf at GiveMeTheVin.com just sold the first Cybertruck to be sold at auction, and it brought two hundred and forty-four grand. That set the market. They're well, they're a quarter million bucks. Check GiveMeTheVin.com if you want to sell one of your rides because he's buying and he's selling, obviously. <laughs> yes, we sell that bitch. That's our job. That's what we do. That's what we believe in. No ifs, no calls. Sell, sell, sell. So the reason that this Bradford pear tree is behind me, there's a story about the tree, young grasshopper. The tree blooms every year when the spring market comes in. And I've had my eye on this tree for a while, and it has not popped I actually wasn't quite expecting it to yet, but on Monday I was watching it and I noticed it was starting to head up pretty good. Um, yesterday morning before the auction, I went and looked and I took this picture in my front yard at the window and she popped. And that means nothing but hang on to your ass, the market's fixing to jump. And it could not have come at a better time because we were loaded, loaded, loaded Wednesday at the auction with heavy merch. We did thirty-five million on nine hundred. That's like thirty-eight eight per car. That's a lot. That's a high average. We're normally running like thirty-two, thirty-three um, grand a car on average. I mean, look at these cars. We sold every single solitary one of them. Thirty-five million. We haven't done that in a while. I mean, it almost felt COVID-esque. It was exciting. Having that cyber truck in the lineup helped because so many people were watching. So our attendance was on lane twenty was six hundred and seventy-five online which is great. I think that's a record. I think the highest we've ever had before was 640. But this um, spring has sprung, ladies and gentlemen, car dealers. This is a car dealer vlog, by the way. If you're public and not car dealer, please turn it off. You're not allowed to be here. It's just for the cool kids. Uh, funny story. So yesterday, we had two buyers saying that they would bought another Tesla truck. And Everybody was excited. I think they were given 138 and 130. I'm sorry, yeah, 187 and 188, and they both stocked them in. <laughs> and the lady at the office sends out an email during the auction and said, "How can two guys buy the same truck, same VIN?" And this is the kind of chaos that happens when markets move like this Tesla truck. So it turns into a money grab. And everybody's got a broker, and everybody's got a guy, and everybody's calling Cunningham, and everybody's calling Big Shot Bob and Abdul and all, all the guys that work for uh, Give Me the Vin because they know they can get their money right now. And they sell us these cars, and, and we get, like on deals like this, sometimes we go through, not brokers, but brokers, wholesalers that are passing through, and they're trying to pick up their five grand. And this, uh, there were two people on this one Tesla, and we bought it from two different places to the point that we stocked both of them in. And um, we worked it out between the buyers. But uh, another weird story. So look at this Rolls Royce. I hate to admit this. We never, ever, 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 ever do this. Ever. It's against our religion. But there was a, a good buyer, a good dealer, that was calling and just panting over this car. And we sold it to him the day before the auction. And it was sitting in the auction barn yesterday. And another really good dealer was like, is this car pulled or what's the deal? And I found out we sold it. And I'm like, why'd we sell it? And he had to have it and this and that. So the other dealer said, hey, I'll give uh, X for it. And that was 10000 more than what we sold it for. So I let the guy know. I said, this is why we don't pull cars from the auction. Um, let them fight over. You never know which one's going to get goofy. And so we called that dealer and gave him uh, five grand and picked up another five grand. Or we might have given him 7,500 profit and we picked up another 25 and kept our guy happy that was there in person. But um, those little weird things I'm telling you about a sign of a spring market where people start grabbing and, and clawing and spitting and chewing and swinging. They're bidding on top of each other. It's not gone bonkers, but it felt right. It, it, it was good. So that's exciting. Spring has sprung. Um, I'll tell you what, what I noticed is um, sports cars real good. Back to the specifics, back to the lanes. Sports cars doing really good. Half-ton trucks doing very good. Uh, a standout yesterday was SUVs full-size. 
and not the new ones, but like the $20,000 ones and the $30,000 ones. Um, those expeditions that we've been selling, like, you know, five grand back of MMR, and MMR drops five grand, we sell it four grand back of that. And it's like, man, these expeditions are worthless compared to Tahoe's, Yukons, and Escalades. Well, there's a huge NADA book on them, and they're catching up. So they started growing back. When, when, when order buyers start hitting the stops on the cars they want, which are the GM full-size SUVs, they start leaning back into other cars that they think they can sell. Same thing goes with Carfax. We don't want any bad Carfaxes. We don't want any bad colors. We won't take any miles over $40,000. We won't take any CRs under a 4.0. We won't, we won't, we won't, we won't, we won't. Well, guess what? Now the market's coming up and you will. I won't bring a fat girl home from the bar. Yes, you will. When you have no other options. So we haven't gone into full-grown 2 o'clock beer 30 market. But it's, it, it'll happen. <coughs> it always happens. It goes from one strike to a two strike to a three strike, then backs up three, two, one. And I started seeing some of the strikes come out of the system. Muddy colors, brown, or, you know, minor on the facts, little fact, car facts this. You know, CR's a three, six, not a four, one. Well, these order buyers go to fill their orders, and they come home with nothing, and then their dealers are like, okay, what are we doing wrong? Well, boss, I couldn't touch these, and I have hard orders not to buy in this space. Well, like, well, let's back it up a little bit. So the rest of the market starts filling out and we don't have to throw the expedi uh, expeditions away and puke on ourselves. When Jeep Gladiators start bringing decent money, that's when you know we're in a spring market. Because Gladiators, all Chrysler products, Stellantis, I mean, they're overbuilt, oversold, undersold. Um, that, that, is a, that is definitely the loser of the pile as far as the Vindex is concerned. I don't have an actual Vindex number for you guys yet, but I'm working on it to actually like have a Dow Jones Standard & Poor's weekly Vindex number that we use, that we talk about every week. I'm working, I'm working, I'm working on it. <clears throat> but Mannheim was pissed about the Cybertruck because the press is everywhere. I mean, I think it got picked up by a hundred different vloggers and automotive news and da 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 da, and they really just said Mannheim, Mannheim, Mannheim. They didn't say anything about give me the VIN. And Mannheim called me and they're like, "Hey, dude, what? It's against our policy to post our prices on our wholesale transactions." And I agree with them wholeheartedly. We're a supplier to the dealer. That's my job. They supply the public. Us showing their prices does not help them do their job. So that's why you never really hear me talk about we sold this car for this. And I don't put that out on a public forum because that dealer that bought that car for 63000 he might not want everybody to know that he bought that car for 63000 So I can't talk about that. But on this Tesla truck, dude, people at Tesla were watching it sell. Cunningham said he had a friend at Tesla that was watching it sell. People were live streaming that sale from um, on all the on the social media, so they logged into MMR. I mean, not MMR. They logged into Mannheim and they they had it up and they were just streaming it on their phone. It's everywhere. So I didn't post any prices until like seven o'clock last night, but it was already out all over the place. So the truck sold for two hundred and forty four thousand dollars. We tried to buy a gazillion of them. Everybody freaks out because the fifty grand uh, threat from Tesla and being blacklisted. Now they're going to start coming down the pipe. We're doing like a lottery at the office to see what the next one sells for. I believe we have another one next week. Pretty sure. We thought we had two, but we bought the same truck twice. Anyway, I know we have four other deals working. But you got to know, we worked 30 deals to get that truck bought because everybody would flake out when they realized that Tesla was going to sue them for 50 grand or, or that was the threat. So this one guy, we finally raised the price up high enough. I think we gave 210000 for it. And we thought we were screwed. We didn't think it would bring two forty five. But we bought two of them, and then we're like, uh-oh, we don't want to run two of them. So we gave 210 for two of them. Two different people, by the way, they just came together, and we quietly sold one the night before the auction for 220 so we only had one at the auction because we didn't want to run two back-to-back. -back. Uh, anyway, put in comments what you think the next Tesla truck will bring at the next Mannheim sale because this will be uh, interesting. We bought um, Alan Jackson's Hummer EV. General Motors gave it to him for doing a gig. And it was the first one we sold. I think we gave, doesn't matter. I, I think it made five grand. It might have made 10. 
Um, we gave two forty, we sold for two fifty, maybe two forty five, sold for two fifty. But remember, we sold the first EV Hummer for about this price, and now you can go buy that truck in our lane on any given Wednesday for a hundred grand. Remember what we were paying for Lightnings. Remember what we were paying for Mach E Mustangs. Shit's coming down. This won't hold up. So, the good news is, is the dealer that bought the truck from us at the auction, guess what he reported today? He, too, sold that bitch. The Porsche store. And those conspiracy theorists on the internet saying that Porsche bought it to re-engineer, reverse engineer it, that's not true. People on the internet uh, say a lot of things that aren't true. So, But it's exciting that everybody's talking about it. We had a race car yesterday that was pretty cool. I've never really had a real race car like this. It was like a 2010 GTR. And this guy spent $300,000 on it. Uh, I won't say what we sold it for because, that again, that's not my business. That selling dealer has plenty of margin to sell this car to his customer for a nice profit, and that's why he comes back to the Gimme the Vin lanes. But it was the damnedest thing I've ever seen. The steering wheel comes off the whole deal. But this guy had $300,000 worth of receipts. $300,000. And I can uh, promise you that uh, it, we did not sell it for that. But anyway, um, the market's up, surf's up. Our lane numbers, will, our counts will start increasing because we'll start buying more aggressively. We'll start converting on consumer deals more aggressively. And they'll sell them to us where they've been pissed off at us. Uh, and other than that, that's really all I've got to say. If you want to sell something, go to GiveMeTheVin.com, load it up. You know we're buying with both hands. And we will see you in the lanes next Wednesday. And remember, Saturday morning, this Saturday morning, if you go to jcwshow.com, you can live stream our radio show. And it's kind of TNA and rock and roll. It's kind of Howard Stern, Joe Rogan, not a lot of cars. I do bid some cars on the air. But if you like bad humor and mildly offensive humor, then um, tune in or you can go to jcwshow.com and click affiliates and just, there were on 66 radio stations around the United States. Saturday morning from 8 to noon. Or you can just stream it at jcwshow.com. And then, after that's over, I'm done for the weekend. Go run my dirt bikes. Chill out. Forget about all this mess. Because, man, it's hard to do this. I'd like to put a shout-out to the staff. Now that, you know, when we're switching gears and ramping back up, it's hard because people get in their in their normalcy. And th there were times when we were selling. The highest I think we ever did was 1,700. But, like, we were regularly running and selling right at 1,300 cars a week. And we have not been doing that because the market hasn't been allowing it. Uh, but we're moving back that way. But I appreciate all the staff have given me the VIN. It takes 200 people to run this thing. And all the buyers and all the late hours and all the recon and all the transportation and all the title work and all the accounting and all the money and all i got to have a wire. And we've got 32 offices around the country. You got an, and, and customers are standing there and they need a check right now. And it's Saturday and it's West Coast, right? So it's 9 o'clock here, but it's 7 o'clock there. And our guys have to get a check over to them right now. And, and deal approval has to approve all the title work and their bank wiring instructions wrong and just all this crap it's it's a tough gig man it's a tough gig and uh everybody that works with us does a great job and i know that you guys can understand that because you're dealers and you feel it too i you know i remember what it's like to sell 20 cars a week much less a thousand uh it's it's uh, what's cunningham always say cars don't sleep wholesaling ain't easy him and brewster they're right it's a tough gig see you on the radio saturday morning see you in the lanes next wednesday thanks Oh, and speaking of the staff, one more thing. I want to put a big shout-out to my boy in Alabama, Three Cars Pierce. Out of all the cars we sold this week, he contributed three. And we want to say nothing like working for the team, working on the ranch, riding the brand, old three cars. He's the man. See y'all.